Alrighty, so this is Diesel We The People News. This video is without prejudice and we're without recourse, okay, y'all? Uh, I'm going to stand on the UCC uh, 1-308. All rights reserved. I'm not going to waive any of it, people, okay? Alright, so uh, if I say anything or do anything, it's just my opinion, my opinion only. Why? Because I'm not an attorney. I cannot give legal advice. Alright, I don't have a fake license like they claim, okay? I do not have a bar membership card either. So therefore, it's all against we the people, right? Um, your attorney they, and the prosecutor and the judge is all bar members and they're all conflict of interest against you. All right? Again, I'm not an attorney. That's my opinion. All right? It just stands to reason that they're all bar members. <laughs> all right? <laughs> they're not there for really 100% beneficial for you. Okay, um, this right here, uh, once again, I've done a couple of videos here, right? Where the storm clouds are gathering, all right? I just like him, and uh, he's doing a little promotion deal about his class coming up, but he has not gave a particular date when this class is going on. Uh, if you'll check back on a couple of my other videos, uh, you'll see some uh, commercial from him talking about his class, all right? Or you just go directly to his channel and uh, go a couple of videos back from him and uh, get the rundown on his class, okay? I never took any of his class, so I do not have full hand knowledge of what his classes are like. However, I believe he's an honorable man, um, and I believe his intentions is true and correct uh, for the people, just by the way he speaks. I never talk to him, speak to him, so therefore... I do not have first-hand knowledge, just what he says through his videos, okay? All right, let's go. Oh, uh, the main part of this I want you guys to really pay attention to and write down is the Real ID Act, okay? These judges, these cops and all that, are supposed to put their full legal birth name. This crap of them bypassing responsible, you know, uh, being responsible for their actions is part of the reason why they're not putting their full name. It's because they don't want to be accountable for their actions, y'all. All right? But they're breaking a law called the Real ID Act. It's okay for them to break law as long as you don't break the law. for good reason. I want to know if you guys can hear this loud and clear. I'm going to go ahead and play it. Violence and destruction. Give me this is not up. the best instrument of tyranny. This is the type of thing used by tyrants who are stupid, clumsy, and desperate. When the masses are being controlled by this, they can clearly see they must destroy or escape who are... Hold on. We can do better. We can do better. Yeah. Oh, you can hear it? All right. We're just Where is pointing go. this at them? The smart tyrants use the other instrument of tyranny, paper, the paper on which is printed the auto registration you must show, the proof of insurance you must show, the tax form that you must file, the permit or license that you must pay for, the application you must fill out. Whether we realize it or not, we only submit to this because we are being threatened by this. What if we knew they did not have this? All uh, through my videos, y'all, once again, right? I've been telling you, all laws are backed up by the threat of violence against you. Every single law that exists is backed up by the threat of that. Every single one of them. Yes, would we do this? I wouldn't. When we do this, we are really reacting to this tyranny. But just as a gun can be pointed in two directions, paper can be used by all parties. How can you use the power of paper? One way is something called an affidavit. An affidavit seems simple and harmless. It's simply a sworn statement of fact signed by a notary. But a lot more people have been robbed with this than with this. A properly executed affidavit is law until it is rebutted by another affidavit. Suppose you send your mortgage lender an affidavit that says 
You've just discovered that the loan documents they asked you to sign have misrepresentations, lack of disclosure, or fraud. If you are wrong, you may go to jail for perjury. If you're right, you may get the deed to your house free and clear. An affidavit is a powerful thing. The author of an affidavit can take all the marbles. He can make the rules. In my affidavit, I can say, you hereby agree to pay me $50 a month unless you rebut this affidavit within 30 days. If you make the mistake of tossing that affidavit into your inbox and forgetting about it, 30 days later, you are a slave to me. Under the law, $50 per month of your earnings belongs to me. That's the point of the... And just to clarify, that would be under the category of science of acquiescence or a tacit agreement. It depends on your operating in commerce or in court, which one and the same, right? It's cryptic notices from your credit card company. These are the new terms of your credit card. The law says that you agree and accept the presented terms unless you respond and refuse to accept. If you respond, you can change those rules all you want. All you have to do is respond. That notice they sent you is not enforcement of their rules. That is an opportunity for you to agree with their rules by remaining silent. Send a notice back saying, you may not charge me any late fees and I will not pay more than 5% interest on my credit card charges. And those are the terms you must accept if you wish to have me as a credit card customer. If the credit card company does not rebut or cancel your card within your time limit, you are legally entitled to the terms you offer. Your announcements and demands are just as valid as theirs. If your notice is in the form of an affidavit, no judge, court, or officer may deny your claim, and the credit card company may not impose different terms unless you agree to them either by response or by silence. As odd as it seems, it's probably not a good idea to ever sign anything that you did not write yourself. If you write it, it benefits you. If they write it, it benefits them, and it probably costs you in a big way. An affidavit is not a complicated thing. The power resides within the Creator. That's the reason why God is above all. He is the Creator. Samples of them are easy to find. There's no particular layout that's required. Basically, it's a sworn statement of true and complete fact with a date and a notarized signature. If it affects another party, it must be presented to that party with a reasonable time for response. Large institutions are very good at sending notices, but they are not very good at reading and responding to notices they receive. That is not your problem. Institutional size and bureaucratic incompetence is not an excuse for anything. Send them the notice and hold them to the terms contained in that notice. If they refuse your terms, change the terms or walk away from the relationship. Just make sure that you always play by your rules, not theirs. That's what the Declaration of Independence is. Our rules, not theirs. Just as tyranny comes in many forms, revolutions come in many forms. We can have a nice, nonviolent revolution. We can even do it all through the mail if we borrow a trick that institutions use against us. If this is used more effectively, then nobody will have to use this. But don't do it if you don't know what you're doing. Paper can be dangerous. I'm Jerry Day, and this is Matrix News Network. So in class, what are we going to go over? We're going to go over a proper process of service via the United States Postal Service. We are going to go into the proper way of doing a W-4 process. We're going to talk about freezing the four sub-credit reporting agencies. We're also going to be talking about disputing the debt 
with the three major credit agencies. We're going to be at, talking about adding trade lines to your credit report, your cell phone, your utility bills, your hospital bills. Everything that you pay should be on these reports so you build a better uh, credit report sheet okay, with the major agencies that gives you the ability to be able to get what you need. Okay, This isn't about gluttony, ladies and gentlemen. This is about living a superior lifestyle. This is about ultimate freedom, and ultimate freedom means uh, 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 not being constrained by your financial abilities. Now, I'm getting ready to show you how you can do this point by point, uh, play by play, without any interruptions. This class is going to be very in-depth. It's going to be very long. Uh, but the information gained in this class will absolutely, equivocally, without question, lead you to financial stability, okay? And the ability to do what you want, when you want, and live the lifestyle you desire to lead, all right? And how to build uh, business credit really quick. This is a PS3877 firm mailing book for accountable mail. Notice the word accountable. Okay, everything in this economic system is about accounting, all right? And ultimate freedom comes with uh, liability, responsibility, and accountability. That's what freedom's all about, okay? Being financially independent and free from the constraints of another is ultimate freedom. So I'm going to explain to you guys in class how we use the PS3877 mail firm book and how to properly execute it, all right, with the stamp and the round bob cancellation by the United States Postal Service, how you enter in the information and data, and why it's so relevant to do all this, and last but not least, what happens when the United States Postal Service employee signs at the bottom of this document. Now, this document here is a ledger of account, okay? And when we're talking about economics, everything is about accounting, all right? And in here we see that this is 50000 in value, all right? The uh, registered mail label 200s are bonded, they're insured for 50000 Dollars or credits on account, all right? And so it's important to understand what the label 200 is, why you use it, when we use it, uh, and the effectiveness it has while we're utilizing uh, the label 200 from the United States Postal Service, which proves chain of title. Chain of title, chain of evidence is very important. Should we need to go to court, we want everything that we're doing to be admissible all right, as evidence before the court. And the PS 3877, ladies and gentlemen, is absolutely admissible. All right. We're going to talk about the PS 3806 registered mail and before you what has been done and why it has been done in the way that it has been done. Um, what you're seeing up here is actually the back of the per PS 3806, which lays out the intentions of why we're making such a transaction. It's important to understand that the United States Postal Office and General Post and Postal Service is a bank, ladies and gentlemen. Everything in the 21st century is about information. Information is valuable, and that information is your private intellectual property. That private intellectual property comes with a common law copyright. You can enforce your common law copyright on your private intellectual property. Ladies and gentlemen, how did these people get your private intellectual property? Did they have the right to sell it to other agencies? When they sold it to other agencies, do you have a right of claim to the profits and proceeds they made from a, uh, your private intellectual property because they failed to disclose what they were doing with your information? We're going to cover that in class. All right, we're going to talk about the PS 3811 return receipt, the significance of it, why it's so important, okay, and uh, how it factors in if we have to go into a competent court of jurisdiction in the judiciary, not in an administrative side, but actually in the judicial side of the courts, okay? We're going to be talking about the names printed and the obligation the Postal Service has to you for the contract that you entered into with them, whether you did certified mail or registered mail, and how you can enforce your claim and even get paid if they 
fail to do their job, which would constitute a breach of trust, dereliction of duty, and breach of contract. All right. The 3811 in, uh, in the above image is incorrect. Proper name, pursuant to Title 18, U.S. Code, subsection 1342. Again, this is the law, all right? Title 18 is an, uh, effectually enacted by Congress, Congress having the authority and the ability to create law to govern commerce, all right? Whoever, for the purpose of conducting, promoting, or carrying on by means of postal service, any scheme or device mentioned in section 1341 of this title, or any other unlawful business uses or assumes or requests to be addressed by any fictitious, false, or assumed titled name or, or address or name other than his own proper name. Okay, this is his or her, uh, or takes or receives from any post office <coughs> or authorized depository of mail matter, any letter, postal card, package, or other mail matter addressed to any such fictitious, false, or assumed title, name, or address, or name other than his own proper name, ladies and gentlemen, how important do you think it is when they continue to repeat the proper name part? All right, they've repeated it twice now. Okay, in Title 18, 1342, shall be fined under this title or in prison not more than five years or both. Now, this is the criminal aspect of it, okay? And then I'm going to walk you through showing you how you meet the elements or prove the elements that exist in order to make this claim. 6 CFR 37.3, full legal name. Uh, means any individual first name, middle name, and last name or surname without use of initials or nicknames. Now, if we go back to the 3811, and as you see, we have a C period, and that may be the last name, it may be the middle name, and then we have a C uh, with a different uh, last name perhaps, or maybe it is the correct name. Um, in any case, if this name is not registered with the Secretary of State in order to do business or engage in commerce, this right here qualifies as a violation okay, of the law that has been codified and put into positive law, which is legal evidence of the law that cannot be rebutted or rebuked by any court throughout the United States. Don't care if it's the uh, Superior Court, the County Court, the District Court. Makes no difference. Title 18 applies to all courts, ladies and gentlemen. Let's so move forward here. The Real ID Act. I'm going to pause there for a second. Now, understand the positive law. Okay? Uh, positive law is just what he said. Congress enacted it. Uh, this Title 18 so it's going to be true and correct as law all right now title 42 which is really basically about uh custody of kids and all that that's not a positive law okay so technically the uh title 42 about the custody of kids and this that here and there family courts in general is color of law public law 13, 119 Stat 302, 49 USC 3301, Section 202, Minimum Document Requirements and Issuance Standards for Federal Recognition, ladies and gentlemen. All right, I'm telling you, I got over 300 hours of putting all this stuff together, and we are just barely going to scratch the surface this morning to show you the importance and the relevance of attending this class. I may only do this class once, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to say it again. I may only do this class once within the next year or two i may disappear altogether from social media i have worked very very hard over the last 12 years to get where i'm at today and it's time for me to go enjoy my life to build my empire to help my my family my friends and my constituents achieve a better lifestyle all right and because you guys have given me the ability and the platform to do what I'm doing, I'm returning the gratuity ten times tenfold by putting this class together for you guys to show you how you yourself can do it. This is not conjectural bullshit. This is not hearsay. Ladies and gentlemen, I only seek in good faith with the purest intentions to show you how you yourself can do this. Okay? The person's full legal name. 
okay? One, 119 Stat 313, Public Law 10913, May 11th, 2005. This was enacted in 2005, ladies and gentlemen. Although it has not been fully implemented, it is the law, and it can be upheld. And you can, in fact, so do so, all right? And this is pertaining to the 3811, but not only just the 3811, all contracts, ladies and gentlemen. You know, there's a doctrine out there that's vague, vague for voidness doctrine, all right? And any contract, if it, any part of the contract be vague, ambiguous, or have falsified information in it, the entirety of the contract is not only voidable, but void, all right? And this is so imperative for you guys to understand how the American people, and furthermore, people throughout the world are being uh, taken advantage of because they presume and assume that the lawyers and the judges are doing the right thing. They're not. There's a maximum of law that stands uh, out there that says, let he who wishes to be ignorant remain ignorant, which means they owe you no duty to correct your way of thinking. Why? Because the Heavenly Father gave us all free will. Not even the Heavenly Father will try to change the way you think. He may put uh, obstacles in your life that cause you to slow down and go, ooh, that was painful, but he will allow you to make the same mistake over and over and over again. Why? Because the free exercise of free will does not allow him to come in and tell you how you can think. All right? And so because I understand this principle and this concept, I know that I can't change your opinion, and I'm not going to try and change your opinion. Why? Because not even the Heavenly Father himself can cause you to think the true and correct way, all right? But what he does is he puts obstacles in your way that leads to trials and tribulations, and, and through those trials, through fire, wind, water, and ice, logic, reason, and sound doctrines and principles, it's his hopes that someday you will fully understand and comprehend the path that you should be on, all right? So again, I'm not here to change your opinion. I'm not here to convince you that you're wrong or that you're right. I'm merely here to provide information to you to allow you to exercise critical thought process and determine for yourself the difference between right and wrong. It's black and it's white. And to give you the information to stand on solid foundation in order to uphold what you know to be true, correct, and not misleading. So in 119 Stat 313, Public Law 109, 13, May 11, 2005, a photo identity document except that a non-photo identity document is acceptable if it includes the person's full legal name and date of birth. Why do I draw your attention to the Real ID Act and, and uh, the postal code? Well, because under the 3811, when somebody is utilizing a false and fictitious name, now they are uh, removing their liability, per se, of who carries the primary active degree of fault as a trustee for receiving that mail matter. If that mail matter did not get to the intended party, the, the, the name on the card should ref reflect true and accurate the man or the woman who became the trustee by receiving something of value who now carries the primary active degree of fault for the damage, the harm, and the loss that you have incurred because they did not get that mail matter to the proper man or woman competent to make the decisions needed to be made. Okay, that's the importance here. When we contract with the USPS, they carry a fiduciary obligation to get the full legal name, and they will be more than happy to do so for you, or they are in breach of contract and trust. Although this may not seem at first glance to be an issue, I seek to uh, remind you all the law is specific, and without the full legal name, one may be barred from remedy in the court from bringing, uh, being able to uh, prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the proper party was served timely. In commerce, ladies and gentlemen, the theory of time is absolutely quintessential. Without the theory of time, 
contractual obligations could not exist. Time is a construct of man, okay? And man created time in order to engage in commerce, okay? Without time, contract is an impossibility. Recourse should the post office employee... All right, so this is 25 minutes long already, all right? Uh, I'm just going to do this part here. I just wanted you just guys to see the Real ID Act. And, uh, which is, he's saying true, you know? Uh, these officers, when you ask for their name and badge number or, you know, uh, identity codes and all that, they are supposed to give you their full legal birth name. Especially if they committed harm against you, right? They illegally arrested you. They, um, you know, uh, so they can stand with uh, uh, the punishment they done when they done wrong, when they caused harm upon you. All right, this is Diesel We the People News. By the way, that's for the judges too. So you can go after the judge with this full legal burden. And that's the reason why they don't do it, is to bypass the law. Till next time, y'all. Bye.